Hi guys and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to look at how to do muzzle flash effects in HitFilm 3 Express. Let's begin. Okay, so before we begin this video, this video is actually going to be split into four parts. The first will be actually finding effects in stock footage. And the second will be about actually tracking the point of the gun so that we can apply the effect on it. The third will be actually applying the effect and the fourth part will be compositing tweaks such as uh, having flashes and making it look realistic in your scene. So you can click on the annotations for either one of these to get to going to that part. Otherwise, continue. Okay, so to start off with, you obviously want to go and have to import your background clip. I've also got another hit clip here, but we'll get into that just a bit later. So drag your background clip in here, and as you can see, mine is just of um, you know a gun being fired rapidly, and that's really all there is to it. Then it finishes and it goes out of sight. You got to get the clip you want to apply your effect to in there first. But then you also get gonna get your effect clip. If you don't know what I mean and and what I mean by uh, clips like these, pretty much you have to get something called stock footage. And this is uh, fo this footage is videos or effects that you can find um, online and then download them and overlay them onto your video to make it look like it's in the scene. For example, this video I have here. It's just a short video, but it is an effect, and it's effect of this muzzle flashing firing effect uh, with these shells coming out of it. So this is, um, you know, a bit of a cheat way, I suppose you could say, but it works very, very well. And uh, they even do this in professional movies. This is what how they, this is the technique they use to do it. Although they film the stock footage themselves. So the pretty the idea is the same. We get footage and then we overlay it onto our clips. So this particular piece of footage is from footagecrate.com. Footagecrate is a really cool website because it gives you loads of free video effects that you can apply straight onto your video. As you can see there are a whole bunch of categories. We're going to be looking at muzzle flashes today and you should be downloading this one which is machine gun, machine gun muzzle flash with shells. Machine gun side with shells. So download that one. They also have music. Um, which is really cool and all of this stuff will really ben benefit your production. Also know that you can choose any muzzle flash you like except the one I'm using is muzzle flash side with shells. So once you've downloaded that particular clip then you're going to have to import it but we're not going to actually deal with that yet. There's something more we need to do. So bring your background clip into the timeline here and then with this background clip you're going to have to make a composite shot so just click that button and call it whatever you want. Click OK and we've got our composite shot here which is by the way where we do all of our visual effects in. So the first thing we're going to do is track the gun because we want to apply the muzzle flash to where the gun is. Now because this is a muzzle flash and not some really really um, important uh, thing where we need to make it super accurate, I'm not actually going to track it very accurately. In fact, it's very hard to use the inbuilt hit film tracker to track it on a background like this. So I'm just going to create a new point by pressing, pressing new layer and point. And now a point layer doesn't actually do anything, but it holds position, scale, and rotation values, transform values, as we can see here. So to change the position of this point, I'm going to first play my video until uh, the gun starts firing. So, around here, let's say. And then, let me just rename this point real quick. I'm going to call it Gun Point. And we're going to use something called keyframing. If you don't know what keyframing is, I have a video right here on all the ins and outs of keyframing. So, go check that out if you're new to keyframing. But otherwise, let's get straight on. So, create a keyframe, click the position. Or click the circle next to the, the item you want to create the keyframe in. So we want to create a keyframe in position because we want to move around the position and animate the position. So press that circle and we've now created a keyframe. We can then move the point. We can't drag it because that'll move the uh, background. 
um, but we can drag the point straight onto the barrel of the gun right there. If you noticed, my gun has actually got tape and rubber bands over it. That's because it, the, the end broke off when I threw it and it fell hard on its nose. And uh, this is my valiant attempt to put it back into position. But nevertheless, we can open up oops, we can open up this gunpoint layer. And because it's only uh, a point, we can have only transform properties. And once we open up, we can see that in the position, we've got a little diamond here. And that represents our keyframe. So we can scrub, scrub to another point in the video, move it to a different position, and it will automatically create a new keyframe on, for us because we've turned this keyframing on. By the way, if you want to go one frame right to the right, then you press the full stop key. And if you want to go one frame to the left, then you press the comma key. It's very weird how they did it, but um, yes, it works that way. So I'm not actually going to create too many keyframes. The reason for this is because the muzzle flash is very big and uh, the actual position of it is not going to be very, very important. It doesn't have to be totally precise. So let's just, um, after a few frames or so, just uh, keep moving the position of this point to the front of the gun. Okay, so we've got a bunch of keyframes here, and now we see that if we select the point, our point moves along with the gun roughly um, as it goes through. You don't need to do this unless you have like loads of movement, but hey, now that we've got a point which is locked onto the gun, we're actually going to place the muzzle flash into the video. But we're not going to do what you think. We're not actually going to just drag this down straight onto the video. You could do that, but we're going to do something different. We're going to right click on this clip, and we're going to press make composite shot. In fact, um, call it whatever you want. So I'm going to call it muzzle flash composite. Keep all the same settings, that's very important, except for the duration. So make it however however long, or roughly, uh, you've been firing for. So I'm going to make mine 15 seconds, just in case. And if you didn't know what this time code here is, the duration, this is the number of this is the uh, the number of hours, I believe. This is the number of minutes. This is the number of seconds, and this is the number of frames. So you can get it a perfect precise point in your video just by using this time code. So I'm going to make it 15 seconds long, same settings, and I'm going to click OK. And we see that we've got our video right here. Now we want to actually extend this video all the way until the end. The reason we've created this separate composite shot uh, is A, it's much easier to manage because then we can just drag one composite shot in instead of having loads and loads of clips, and because we're going to be using this composite shot in more ways than one. So to duplicate this layer, just press Command D, and then scrub forward to the point where the muzzle flashes stop, which is around here. So once you've gone to that point, we can now drag this to that layer, to that position where it stopped, and it will start again. And we can see that even the bullets or the shells, as they come flying out of the gun still come flying out of the gun, which is really, really cool. So let's again go to the position where it stopped. Okay, so the next step is to go back into our composite shot here and drag the composite shot of the muzzle flashes into the video. Now we should probably actually scrub first to where we want to start firing, which is around here and then drag the video on. And now we'll see that it will start firing for us. However, it's not in position and it's not following the gun. So what we need to do is at the position where we can see the first muzzle flash, move it into position, so just in front of the gun. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the transform settings so that the anchor point is right at the very tip of the muzzle flash. The reason for this is when you rotate something or you scale something, it will scale around the anchor point. So it's useful to have it 
right around the tip there. So now we can scale it up and it will remain in the same sort of position. So I don't know how big this is going to be. This is actually quite big. So I'm just going to scale it down to something like that. Just to give you guys an idea. But now we see it sort of starts to drift off. It may even be even, even more of a change in your video. But what we can do is go back to this original frame where it is of any frame where it's perfectly in position so probably this first frame and then over here we can change our parenting controls so the reason we created this gunpoint point is because now we can parent this layer to the point and now we can see that it follows the point as it moves through and it follows the gun that is really cool so now that we've got our, our muzzle flash in position, um, we can see that actually it keeps going even after we don't want it to go. So I'm just going to maybe delete a few of these. Okay, so that's pretty much perfect. But what you could do is if it wasn't perfect like mine is, you could get back your duplicate and at the point where it stops, then go to a frame where they, where this one, the new one, has shells and then cut them both to that short amount of, of space and we'll see it sort of changes but it doesn't change all that much and it's not a noticeable difference, we won't see it very clearly but anyways, mine's perfect like it is there so we can keep the muzzle flash like it is now but now we want to do some uh, some more compositing tweaks because it doesn't look entirely realistic. Sure, we could play this back and the effect is possible, but there's a few more things we can do. And there's a few more things I did if you've seen the uh, the video where I actually show you a final product of something I did. So if we go into our layer properties of the muzzle flash composite shot, we can choose the blend mode. A common blend mode is add, or we can also use screen. And we can also see that now it blends, the muzzle flash itself blends in much better with the background. But we do have a problem here, and that's the shells. Because I just set mine to color dodge, uh, because that gave it a really fiery look. And uh, I just left it like that. But pretty much the way you would do it if you wanted this to be a certain color, and the shells not to be, is you grab this rectangular mask tool, or in fact you duplicate the layer, by pressing again command D and then on the top layer for example set this to be uh, just just the muzzle flash for it to only show the muzzle flash and on this layer you want it to only show the shells and that way we can set the individual properties oops sorry for example we can make this color dodge and the shells will remain intact. I didn't actually do this for my original video, but hey. We can see a sort of a line here, especially when we have a really big muzzle flash. Um, we can see a bit of a line here, so we can go into our mask settings and just feather, feather it out a bit, just to make it a lot smoother and to make the effect uh, not so visible. So, that's the basis, basics of our muzzle flash done, except there's no real flash, it's just the actual thing and it's not affecting anything outside it. So there's something else that we can do to fix that. If we duplicate this layer again, yes, yet again, then there's something else we can do. We can actually scale the layer up and blow it, and I'll show you what this does. So if I scale this layer up a lot, and I move it, say, here, so it pretty much covers the uh, the muzzle all the time. Pretty much covers the gun and what what would be lit up. Um, maybe just make it even even further this way. And that way, it's always lighting up the gun. Um, but th what we can do is then set a different blend mode. For example, screen or maybe even like add and then bring the opacity way down and we'll see that when we just 
jack the opacity up just a little bit. It gives a glow on our video, but we can still see the outline. It's quite definite, so let's just bring the opacity up just to show. And we can now search for a blur effect, just a normal blur. Apply it to our effects and blur it up a lot. And that way, we can't really see the shape, but we can see it's roughly coming from the area. Now the reason we didn't use more advanced such as things such as lens flares and all sorts of things for the muzzle flash is that it's not actually flashing when the muzzle is flashing. And using this method, as long as we have the right timing, then the muzzle flash will always be there when the muzzle is actually flashing, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I went even further with this. Um, you didn't need to go this far, but what I did was I even scaled this up just one more. Just, an, just one notch further, and I scaled it up to fill the entire screen. If I just got rid of the blur, set it to 100%, and scaled it way up, like way up, then we can see that it fills the whole screen, pretty much the whole screen all the time. And again, I set this blend mode to add, and the opacity to something very low. This way the whole screen sort of flashes when the muzzle's flashing. And I thought this was a really nifty effect. So we're pretty much done with the effects. Just to, just to finish off, I'm just going to give uh, this quick grade. If you don't know how to do color grading in this program, I've got a tutorial on that so you can just click on the video. Um, however, the reason we're doing such a grade, just a quick grade, is because um, it'll help tie the whole effect in together. If we have them all up with the same sort of effects applied, then it starts to look a lot more realistic, and the flare sort of sits in with the video. So I'm not going to overdo any effects here, or at least try not to. I've sort of already overdone quite a bit of stuff here. But we can see that um, it already looks a lot better and a lot more realistic than before, because it's not just been slapped on. At least that's how it looks to me. So I'm also going to drag a letterbox on here. And there we go. That looks pretty cool. So I hope this video helped you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, if it did, obviously leave a like. And for those of you who have been waiting for the lightning tutorial, yes, when it comes out there will be an annotation here. But yes, that will be coming out very soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. Uh, like, subscribe, comment. I'll see you guys later. Bye.